my dudes, my name is Cecilia and welcome back to another week in my kitchen here in Stockholm. This week we are making sea buckthorn tart. It is so floral and fragrant and tropical even though sea buckthorn is not at all a tropical fruit. It is gorgeous and show stopping and I cannot wait to teach you guys how to make it. So let's just get started. So what even is sea buckthorn anyways? Sea buckthorn is a small orangey yellow berry. It grows on bushes, usually in like sandy soil, so along the coast. It's very common all across Northern Europe. It is also grown all the way across Ukraine, Russia, and into Mongolia and China as well. In Swedish, this is called haftorn, and you can find it at like literally every grocery store in the freezer aisle in these little boxes. It's not really cheap, but uh, nothing in Sweden is cheap. So this has the punch you in the face flavor of a tropical fruit. It also substitutes perfectly with passion fruit. They both have black seeds. They're both very sour. They're both yellowy orange. So if you don't have access to sea buckthorn, then just go ahead and do this whole recipe with passion fruit. It will be perfect, like literally a one-to-one -one substitute. First, make the crust. Add all of your dries to your mixing bowl and then add the butter. Add your egg to the milk and whisk until combined, then set to the side. Pop your bowl onto the stand mixer. Using the paddle attachment, mix on low speed just until sandy. Add your egg and milk mixture, then continue mixing. Stop while your dough is still crumbly. Knead by hand until the dough comes together. Form the dough into a square of even thickness and wrap in plastic. This now goes in the refrigerator for at least one hour. Overnight would be great, but at least one hour we want to let this chill and hydrate a little bit. So our dough has now been sitting for well over an hour. And you can see that like it's hydrated, like all of those dry patches that we had in the dough have now hydrated. It's nice and stiff, perfect for us to use. I like to put just a tiny bit of flour down. We don't want this to stick at all. And as with all doughs, I am constantly turning it, touching it, adding a little bit of flour so I know that my dough is never going to stick to the table. Now I know my dough is thin enough because I'm starting to see my marble pattern on the bottom of it here. If your dough is sticking a little bit to the table, you can always take your large offset and I'm going all the way underneath it and just kind of releasing it. It's not exactly like sticky stuck, but it is pressed a little bit to the table. All right. So we're just gonna roll it up like this. Okay. And then you take your form and just unroll it again. There we go. And again, all of this cracking here is not so much of an issue because we're just going to press it into our form and it's going to be just fine. This dough is a little bit on the tender side. It's a little bit fussy, but it tastes really good. So we put up with it. And what I'm doing is just going around and lifting the corners up and pressing the dough in. The thing that's nice about a dough that's so crumbly like this is that like that's the mouth feel that we're gonna end up having. We're just gonna trim our edges with our offset. There we go. And I'm just going around to all of my little edges here and just cleaning them up and making sure that they're nice and even. Now, because we are par baking this all the way, I'm going to prick it with my fork. So that way when it bakes, there's no steam being trapped underneath the dough. This now goes in the freezer for at least 30 minutes. 
So the tartella has now been in the freezer for about 45 minutes and now it's just time to pop it in the oven. I've had the oven preheating at 150 degrees Celsius, no fan, and it doesn't need any baking beans or anything. It can just go straight in frozen as is. Oh, there we go. Look how pretty. Perfectly golden brown. It is exactly what we're looking for. And now we just have to let this cool 100%. It is ready to go and we'll go ahead and make the filling. Take your defrosted sea buckthorn berries and blend them into a juice. Strain the juice and scale directly into your pot. Add lemon juice, sugar, and three eggs. Using ice water, hydrate your gelatin leaves and set to the side. While whisking continuously over a medium high heat, bring the sea buckthorn mix to 83 degrees Celsius. As soon as it hits 83 degrees, take it off the heat and mix in the bloomed gelatin. Strain immediately. Cover with plastic on contact and let sit until cooled down to between 45 and 50 degrees. Once cooled, begin adding the butter at about a tablespoon at a time. I like to do this by hand, but you could also use a hand blender. Once all the butter is incorporated and you've made sure there are no little lumps of butter, pour the curd into the baked tart shell. I like to give it a little jiggle so it flattens nicely. Put it in the fridge and let set for at least three hours, but preferably overnight. It's the next day. Our tart has been setting in the refrigerator overnight. As you can see, it's not liquid at all, but it looks just so gorgeous. I'm so excited about it. And the last thing we have to do is just put a bunch of meringue on it and then eat it. Into the bowl of your stand mixer, add egg whites, sugar, and lemon juice. Place your bowl over a pot of simmering water and start whisking immediately. Once the sugar dissolves, immediately take the bowl off of the heat and pop it into your stand mixer. Start whisking on high straight away. Whisk until stiff peaks form. Look how beautiful this meringue is. This is exactly what we want. Now you don't wanna to put too much meringue over the top. That's almost cute just like that. <laughs> but I want everyone who, that's actually really cute. Look at that beautiful peak, oh my goodness. But I want everyone to be able to have an equal amount. And the tart, while sour, can also be quite sweet, of course, because it has a lot of sugar and butter in it. So you don't wanna to put too much meringue. This is not like a lemon meringue pie where you want this mile high layer of meringue. We want just enough to kind of, I don't know, give us a little something, something. Give us those toasty notes. So you just wanna spread it out and make sure that there's a lot of waves and a lot of shadows. You'll see when it toasts what happens. It makes it really like extra pretty. And you want it to be kind of organic. There we go, I think I'm happy with that. So ridiculously gorgeous. Oh my goodness. All right, now it is just time to toast this meringue. Now normally I would recommend torching it but my torch is not working, so we are going to put it in the oven. You wanna set your oven to as hot, like to like the grill function on top, and then as hot as it goes, because we're just trying to get this meringue to be brown, but we don't want to like cook it more or anything. I'm gonna be honest with you, I did not actually think my grill function thing like would work. I've literally never tried it before, but my torch like went out the other day and I was like, oh, well, I've always heard you can do meringue on the grill function in the oven, but I did not realize that it was gonna turn out this well. Like this is gorgeous. I'm so proud of myself right now. <laughs> okay, but let's, let's finish this tart up. So I have this beautiful blue plate. Well, it's not super beautiful, but it's gonna look beautiful with this tart. So we're just gonna take it from underneath like this, just comes right out so easy. Oh my goodness gracious, look at that. How ridiculous is that, no? And then just to be a little fancy because we like that, we're gonna add just a touch of lime zest over the top. It could be lemon zest or you could skip this, but it's just, it's so nice. Why not add a little extra pizzazz to it? Look at that, I mean, this is ridiculous also. This lime smells so good, but like, you guys. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, I'm gonna try to do one little kind of tricky thing here. We should complete. We are gonna try to take this off. There we go. So obviously this plate is not flat, so you can see the tart kind of sunk in. And also this tart is now not moving. So, okay, well, there's that. I know I've said it before, but even after having worked in like, even specifically pastry for 10 years, anytime something works this well, I'm just overjoyed. Like the magic, it never stops. Like I am always so, excited when something is beautiful and I get to eat it. I get to put it in my mouth. <coughs> Take our handy dandy giant pastry knife that we love, our best friend. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie to you. This plate was not the best <laughs> to put it on because it has like these like high edges, but we're gonna do what we can here. Let's see if I can get underneath. <laughs> <sighs> oh my God, oh my God. Y'all see this? Holy guacamole. And now, the moment of truth. <laughs> mm. Wow. It's sweet, but there's still a lot of sea buckthorn flavor in there. The crust is like very cookie-like. I really like that. Like it's crumbly, but not like flaky pie crust crumbly. And it's not like hard, like crispy. So it just like, you get a perfect mouthful every time you stick your fork in and the sea buckthorn is so it's so aromatic and the whole thing is just so luscious good job me <laughs> i am so happy with this tart and i hope you guys make it i really think you'll enjoy it and if you enjoyed this week's video then please like comment subscribe all the things you guys know the drill i say it every week but it really does help me out and i hope you have an excellent week hey Dua.